Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna be talking about how to gain the trust of a new bird. Now this is something that a lot of people struggle with when they first bring in a bird because it can be difficult. The thing to keep in mind when you bring in a new bird, a lot of people expect that immediately within a few days, you guys are gonna be best buddies, you guys are gonna be bonded. And that is usually not the case. Not even guaranteed with baby birds either. So if you're thinking about the age difference of who's gonna bond easier, then that's probably not gonna be the case either. Training, bonding, trusting, this is a process. Keep in mind, you are bringing this small to large creature into a new home. There's new faces, new sounds, new environment. You are a giant next to them. Put yourself in their shoes. That's kind of intimidating. If somebody just picked you up, brought you home, or like some super large giant, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be a little scared. You're gonna be cautious. You don't know if this person's gonna hurt you. And it takes time. Same thing with making friends. When you make a friend, you don't trust them immediately. You guys talk over a few days, few weeks, some time passes, and then eventually, you know, you get to the friend stage where you can tell them everything, you guys are hanging out, stuff like that. So take it as kind of that kind of progress situation. Now, there are techniques and tricks to getting a bird to bond with you and gain their trust, but again, be patient. Some people can do it in a few days, other weeks, other months, and it also depends on the bird's background. Are they a rescue? Were they neglected? Were they lost? Were they injured before you found them? Are they just a bird with absolutely no issues? Are they coming from a different home? Is it a baby? All of these things you need to keep in mind with the time process. So step number one, you have brought your bird home. What are you gonna do? Put them in a room where you are most going to be at. Make sure that they are where they can see the door so that they are not spooked by whoever comes in because they already can see who is coming in. Make sure the room is not cluttered. There's not an excess amount of noise. There's not a lot of people. There's not a lot of movement. The environment is simply calm and welcoming. Because they're starting to get used to this new place that they just got brought into, too much sensory overload is gonna make it harder for them to bond with you because they can't relax. They think their whole environment is in danger. While birds are loud, they do enjoy their quietness. Step two, where are you going to be in this situation? So I don't recommend sitting like right in front of the cage. Put your hands around the cage. Do not start talking in a loud voice. Don't like overbear them with your presence. Just chill in the room. It can be sort of next to their cage, just a seat away. And just be there so they get used to your face. Talk to them softly. You can say things like, hey, it's okay, introduce yourself. You can be like, this is your new home. I'm gonna take good care of you. They are going to respond to your tone, to your body language. So that is all really important. Number three, how often are you gonna be home? You can't expect a bird to suddenly bond with you, trust you quickly if you're barely home. So if you work away from home, and let's say there's somebody else who's mostly home, they're probably gonna start to trust and bond more to that person than to you. If you want to be their primary caregiver, bonder, whatever it is, then you need to be home. If you're working like Mondays to Fridays, eight hour shifts, then it's gonna be hard to do so. Especially in the first two weeks that they are new in that home, you need to be there as much as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Why are you being a sweetheart? Yeah, are you being a sweetheart? I forget what number I'm on. Small little side comment here is that make sure you are bringing them to an appropriate space, an appropriate case, and as well an appropriate room. The room should have windows. Sunshine should be able to come in. The cage should be appropriate for the size of the bird, the minimum size requirements for each bird size. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. The cage should have an appropriate amount of purchase, appropriate toys, and the room should not be extremely small. The home should not be extremely small. I know it's out of a lot of people's control, um, situations like this, but I would reconsider getting a bird if that is the case. So before attempting to even let them out of the cage, which I know you guys are probably so antsy to try and like 
get them to step up on your finger, to get them out. Make sure you are reading the bird's body language to make sure that they are comfortable with their environment. They shouldn't be pressed up in a corner of the cage, feathers tucked in, body held high, because that's going to probably indicate that they are scared. A bird who is comfortable will move around in their cage. They'll be preening a lot. They will start maybe talking a little bit, making little sounds, kind of like Nusa's doing right now. That can be signs of a bird is much more comfortable as well. They see you, they are not, you know, startled. They are in, they are in backing up into the cage, so they're starting to feel more comfortable with you. While they are in the cage, start to slowly close the distance. So after they get comfortable with you, let's say on the chair that's across the room, move a little bit closer, let them get comfortable to you that distance and closer and closer. Now, obviously you don't want your face pressed against the cage, but to obviously a normal level, let them get comfortable with you there. Once all of this criteria is met, it is time to start the process. By doing so, I am a believer that they're gonna have to get out of their cage eventually. So before letting them out, Keep in mind so many safety measures. One, make sure there are no dangers in your house. Windows are closed. Doors are closed. If a window is open, then it has a mesh screen. A lot of the times, it's recommended for your windows to just be completely shut with the blinds, with the curtains, or to put like, I've, I've seen sticky notes on the windows so that if they got scared, they freak out, they're not gonna bump into the window. So honestly, it's better to have it closed the first times around when you get them out of the cage. Make sure there are no candles lit. Make sure there's nothing toxic that they can get into. One of my biggest things is to set up landing spaces because a lot of birds, when you let them out, they either decide to fly or they just decide to sit atop of their cage. In case they do decide to fly, make sure you have some landing spots. For example, something on the ceiling, like some swings, some of those rope swirls, maybe you guys got a stand tree, something like that, where if they do decide to fly, they explore around, then they can land there. Make sure there's adequate lighting. Birds do not see in the dark. They may bump into something or they can get seriously hurt if there is not enough adequate lighting. You are the only person in the room. They don't need to be overwhelmed with somebody who they are still getting to know that isn't their main bonded person. Make sure the environment is quiet. Any sudden noise is going to startle them. Make sure nobody is vacuuming. Make sure, make sure nobody's turning on the blender or the food chopper, just stuff like that. Maintain the noise to a very minimum. Maintain your movements to very minimum. If you start running around, moving around, making big motions with your hands, they can take this as a threat. They will get aggressive. The biggest challenge with having a bird is learning their body language. Even us people who do education, we still make errors with reading their body language. We still get bit. It is bound to happen. It's to minimize it as much as possible. So you let your bird out. Scenario one, they fly. Birds are like babies. They have to learn to fly and you have to give them the opportunity to do so. Do not clip their wings. Clipping their wings is purposely disabling your bird. I don't know what kind of moral standing you have to have to think that's okay because it's not. Clipping the wings is most likely to get them hurt because they no longer have the ability to control their flight. They're more at risk for cardiovascular disease, overweight, they lack exercise, psychological issues because that is their main transportation form. Temporarily clipping their wings so that they bond to you is literally bonding through force and fear. You want a true bond. You want them to truly trust you because you are giving them their freedom their right to fly, their right to move, and they feel comfortable with you. You're gonna make them feel unsafe. They're gonna feel like they have to comply to you in order for them to not be further scared or abused. It's really horrible. It's Wing clipping is considered abuse in Spain, in Germany. Very old practice that is now getting very debunked because we have much more knowledge, much more research on the reality of what it causes. So yes, it takes more time, but trust me, the payoff is so much more. So what I was getting to the point of this is that they might fly and, you know, kind of bump into something. They're going to be slow flyers. They're not going to be very fast. Birds in general, because you gave them that time, to just map out their surroundings, they mapped out the room. So it's very unlikely unless they get scared that they are gonna freak out and bump into something. So that's what the landing spots are for. So when they fly, they can just 
land somewhere chill and kind of start to feel comfortable with the fact that they're free now my biggest thing is that when you let them out of their cage you are letting them know they are not a prisoner they are not stuck there they are free to move around and that makes them in turn more comfortable with you and they start to trust you more because they're like hey wait this person is going to let me out and let me be around or not locking me in somewhere you know what this person's kind of cool think about it that way scenario two they just stay on top of their cage they're chilling that's a great scenario now uh, still don't unless absolutely necessary don't try and grab them don't touch them don't get so close to them just give them a bit of time to just chill now if you're worried about you know they're not getting back in their cage something happens like that they eventually will when the sun starts to go down it starts to get dark they need to sleep and their cage should become their bedroom their room not a prison so they should feel comfortable there like it's a positive thing and not reinforce it as something negative or punishment or something like that one of my good tricks that has always worked for me when it comes to having a bird feel comfortable outside of their cage coming back to the cage is that i like to put their food outside of their cage now i have mine out 24 7. if you have yours kind of like 80 20 something like that you can have both ways you can keep bowls inside and on the outside now the reason why i have these things on the top of the cage is because this will encourage them to start eating and feeling comfortable outside of that room it'll also encourage them to go back to the cage when they get hungry so they are training themselves to return and that is their spot of a food of sleep without having to be locked in there now again once they start to feel comfortable with this kind of routine again should be closing in the space no running at them no trying to grab them i know it's tempting i've heard this so much people are like ah i i, I tried to put my finger to my bird and, and they bit me they got aggressive again they're scared of you still you're still new you're gaining their trust do not try and forcefully put your hands or face anywhere near them they will bite you they will warn you that they'll bite and they'll get aggressive that is the body language that you are still trying to learn how to figure out now if you guys need help with reading their body language i do have a youtube video on that once you start to close in the space food is going to be your best friend so grab a treat something that they usually don't have because if you've seen my other videos i talk about their dietary needs it should not be seeds those are treats those are full of fat and no nutrients it should be pellets chop which is vegetable chopped up finely fruits and maybe some nuts like walnuts or almonds as well as some treats here and there so keep those treats forbidden foods for training so these can range anywhere from some millets sunflower seeds almonds walnuts you can even get those like treat bag mixes of like dried fruits banana chips whatever it is something that you'll discover they like and this is going to be your training base so you're going to put it in your hand and you are going to offer it them not quickly not shoved in their face you are just going to bring it to them and be like here you go they might take it they might run away they might be hesitant again read their body language if they're trying to tell you hey hey, hey get away that's okay try again later try again tomorrow it's gonna be a process until eventually they are gonna take it they're gonna take a bite out of it perfect your hand is gonna start being associated with something positive something of giving not taking not abuse of giving so now your hand is associated with being a provider of food soon to be a provider of trust of love of bond after they have like a distance between your hand and food you can start closing the distance between your hand and them you can even try putting food on the palm of your hand and offering it to them a lot of the times this helps slowly get your bird to see your hands actual fingers and sometimes they'll even step up themselves don't wiggle your fingers don't move your hands around keep it very still and please do this once they get a little more comfortable because it is possible that they might flip and suddenly bite you so especially if you do a sudden jerk movement wiggle your fingers something like that so be as steady as possible if they accept on your hands fantastic let them eat if they don't that's okay try again later try again tomorrow keep trying until you can move on to the next step okay so now they're comfortable with your hands full of food and now what you're going to do is that you're going to try and bring it a little bit closer to them again be very careful with this part read their body language and if you can get close enough just do a little tug under 
kind of like here, a little tug like that and see if they'll step up with their feet. You can even, some people like just do a little stroke of their feet, kind of like a little bit under very gently and this might get them to step up and do this along with the command of step up. They probably won't like it. They might be okay with it. They might just be like, hey, stop or I'm gonna bite you. But this is gonna start associating them with in your finger near and getting them to step up on it. Now, once they're very comfortable with this step, you can start eliminating the food and you can start working with just your finger. Now, some people use the clicker method. I am not big on the clicker method. It's, it's great, it works. It's just for me personally, the clicking bothers me, just sound wise. So I don't use the clicker method. I use Mark and Morning. <laughs> oh. So you can start eliminating the food and just using your hand. Well, treat reinforcement, whether with the clicker or not, is still gonna be your best friend. Now you just don't need to hold the food 24 seven. So you can bring your finger over and let them get used to, again, with space, to just your hands because they no longer have food that they got accustomed to. Start closing in the space, same tips like I said before, until you're able to get closer. And stroke their feet, tuck under their belly just a little bit. If they don't step up, that's fine, give them a treat. But try it again, see if they step up. They might even start to put up one foot, kind of hesitate, take it away, and then it'll be a slow process and then every time just reward them because they're doing their best. And eventually they'll take the first steps and stand on your finger. When this happens, don't yank them back. Don't be like, ha ha, I got them on my finger. Just leave your finger alone because they are like, I don't, I've never been on this before. I don't know what's gonna happen. Just leave it steady and then let them think about it. If they wanna step off, they can step off. Now again, keep doing this process until they're feeling more comfortable where you can slowly start moving your finger. They might freak out, they might fly off. Again, a process. Like all of this is kind of the same idea every time. And then eventually you'll be able to have them on your finger. Again, every time you do this, make the command step up, step up, step up, so that they are associating a command with the action of getting on. And later when you guys have a really strong trust established, then you really don't have to say this command they'll just kind of know, but for now it's very useful. So now you have them on your finger and they're starting to trust you at this point because the more you bring them closer, they're gonna start trusting you, talk to them softly as usual. Don't be aggressive with your speech. Don't sway them around and move them around. There might come a point where your bird starts to come up to your shoulder because birds love to be pirates. Yeah. I knew it. I knew you were a pirate because you always steal things. Now this can scare a few people, especially because one wrong move and they might bite your face. Ouch. If they do start to come to your shoulder and maybe you feel you're not ready or they're starting to come with their beak open in attack mode, use your hand to block them away. It's better to get a finger bitten than your face bitten for sure. You can redirect them back onto your finger. I like to use my knees. Uh, my birds love sitting on my knees, so I will stay on my bed, I'll put up my knees and they'll just chill on my knees. This keeps them away from my face. Now, obviously now they can be next to my face, but I'm saying like in, in the beginning, I used to put like a blanket over my knees. They'd sit there and we'd be at an enough distance where I could talk to them, watch them, they could watch me and we'd start to get comfortable down. Until you both start feeling more comfortable, then they can slowly start coming up to your shoulder. Again, no jerky, sudden movements, keep the environment calm because otherwise your natural response will be to attack the closest thing next to them. Keep at it every single day because every single day they're gonna gain more and more and more trust on you even if you think they fully trust you they might not fully fully trust you it takes a lot of time keep learning their body language activities you can do to further bond and make sure you're spending tons of time with them this one is the biggest key factor you guys can watch a movie together I usually recommend at the beginning or in general just more children friendly calm movies um, I like to watch Disney with them um, maybe something with nice music, listening to music together. Again, try and keep it calm. Don't make it something intense at the beginning. Birds have musical preferences. Some of them might like metal, rock, classical, uh, pop, and you'll discover this slowly, but at the beginning, you just want it to be calm until you start getting to know their music taste. So keep it to something like lo-fi beats, to classical music, to some maybe romance, soft songs, stuff like that, always a good choice helps them chill out, helps them have a calm environment. And as well, just talk to them. 
just chat with them, talk to them, act like they are just a person. Birds are so incredibly smart. They can understand, they can speak. They start to understand the context of words. So if you just speak to them, they're gonna start to understand you. And I notice the more time you spend, the more love you give, the more you speak to them like they are just with you as a person, the more they understand, the more they bond with you, the more they start to trust you. I don't know how to explain it, but just guys, love is the answer to everything. That is how you patience and love for this whole process. So thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it helped out. I know it probably wasn't your quick and easy answer you wanted, but really there is no quick and easy answer. At the end of the day, it's different for every single bird. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure to hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more of us. Check out our social media links down below as well as our Etsy shop. We have more videos for when after this process uh, ends. We have a very important video of recall training, which I highly recommend you guys check out, as well as safeties of free roaming your birds, having them out of their cage. If you guys are interested in having them in the lifestyle that I do, then definitely check those out. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.